Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the next video in the tips and tricks series of UiPath and today I am going to give you 10 tips that are going to help you to speed up your development process. Prior to this video, we have already covered these tips in 10 parts. Also, we have a dedicated playlist where we have shown all these tips in short videos. In case you are new to the channel and you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel to get the latest updates. And a request to you, let me know in the comments that which is the tip which you like the most. And if you have some tip which you wanted to share, feel free to share that as well. So let's get started by looking at the 10 tips for today. Why selecting the correct container while generating selector is important. For example, I have this website where I have to click on certain dates, maybe 8, 9, 10th or 11th. If I go to UI Explorer, I just click indicate element and I point it to just this 10. If you see here in the inner text, I am getting only the 10 and in the AA name, I am only getting 10. If I have to make this dynamic selector, then I would require the month and the year also. But let me now show you one more thing. If I just go here and now instead of selecting this 10, I just select the complete box like this. Now if you notice, I am just getting the entire date and timestamp like this. Now it would mean that I can actually pass this value as a dynamic variable and we can select this. Whenever creating a dynamic selector, if you are not getting the value, make sure you just increase the scope of the container. Also, you always has an option to include more nodes to the selector to get the actual thing which you require. I am writing an automation in UiPath where I have to type something on the notepad. But let's say because of some reason, I am not able to use the type into activity because I am not having the selectors or this application is not allowing me to use the type into activity. Now the only option which I have is to use the hotkeys which is to use the hotkey which is called control plus V. So if I do a control plus V, I am able to paste the text in the notepad which is not using the type into activity. Now let us see how exactly we can do the same in UiPath Studio. I will cut this text from here. In UiPath Studio, we have an activity which is called set to clipboard drag and drop the activity you have an option to set the text i just pass the text in double quotes like this this activity will set the text to the clipboard now to paste the text just use an attach window activity point it to the notepad drag and drop a send hotkey and pass control v let's try to run the automation the robot was successfully able to do a control v with the text whichever we have set to clipboard if I talk about the properties of the set to clipboard, this has a single input property which is called the text where you have to specify the text which you want the robot to copy in the clipboard and then all you have to do is just do a control plus V to paste the text anywhere. I am in my UiPath studio and I have a sample RE framework open in front of me. If I go to the variables, I could see there are a lot of variables which are created. Now, for example, I wanted to know which are all the places where this transaction ID is being used, right? So simply all I have to do is just right click on the variable and click on find references. Find references panel will open and it will show you all the places where exactly this thing is used or initialized. If you want to go to a specific place, you can see the location here. You just double click on it and it will directly take you to the location. The same applies to arguments as well for any of the argument finding the references just right click on it and click on find references and it will show you which all places is this argument being used. What else? Go to the activity panel click on any of the activity which you want to know whether you have used or not just right click on the activity and click on find references and you should be able to see that where exactly have you used. So for example it is showing me that Mukesh you have used the right line activity here so if i just double click it directly take me to the activity this is the official documentation of the find references panel which shows that it can be used for files in the project panel activities variables arguments and descriptors in the object repository panel 
I am on my orchestrator. Now what exactly is rollback and why this is important? I have a process which is called the ACME linear process which is running on version 1.0.11. Now let's say for some reason I uploaded a new version and the new version is having some issue and the entire functionality is gone. Okay, and now we want to roll back to the previous version, which would be maybe 10, 9 or any one previous. How do we do that? It's absolutely simple. Go to the process, click on this edit button. It will edit the process and you would see there is something which is called the package version. This indicates that this is the current one, which is 1.0.11. Go to the drop down and you would see all the previous version. For example, I understand that 1.0.8 is the version which is working perfectly. Just click on that and hit rollback. And I say confirm. Now you can see that the ACME linear process is now downgraded to 1.0.10. This blue indicates that there is the latest version which is available and you are running the automation in one previous version, right? This green indicates that this is using the latest version. How can we actually assign an icon to the projects which we create in UiPath Studio? It's absolutely simple. Go back to the UiPath Studio. If your project is already created, you just have to click on this button which says settings. Here you would have options such as to change the name, description and you have this option which says package icon. You have to click on this folder, select any icon of your choice. It could be .ico, .jpeg or .jpeg. All these formats are mentioned here. Hit open and you would notice that icon is now available. You have to just simply click OK. Now whenever you are trying to publish the project to the orchestrator, you would see the same option is available as the package icon. This is exactly the same. We just have to specify the icon path here, right? Now if I simply go and click on this button which says publish, Remote Automation Project is published to the Orchestrator. Now let me come back to my UiPath Assistant and look for the project which we want to trigger which is the Remote Automation and you could see that I am able to get the icon which we have specified. So that is how you specify icon in the UiPath project. I am in my UiPath Studio and assuming that I am writing an automation to kill a process called Excel. I drag and drop an activity which is called kill process and in the process name in the double quotes I simply write Excel which means that when this automation will work it will kill the Excel. Now consider a scenario where I have to kill some other application it can be Word, it can be SAP or any other application. How would we know the process name? It's absolutely simple. Go to the start menu, search for the software, right click on it click on open file location it should navigate to a shortcut of the software right click on it go to the properties in the target scroll to the right and at the end you would say something which is called .exe just copy the first word before the .exe do a control plus C come back to UiPath paste it here and this is your process name this same applies to the shortcuts which are available on the desktop. For example, I want to kill the PowerPoint. So I simply go here, right click on the PowerPoint, click on the properties and if you see here at the end it says power pnt.exe. Hit control plus C, come back to this one, paste it here and my job is done. So that is how we get the exe name to be used in the UiPath processes. I created a project in UiPath and started working on it and the name of the project is blank process 19. After a while I realized that the name is not proper and now I want to change the name. Do I need to create a new solution and copy paste the code? The answer is no. We can simply rename this project. How do we do that? Just click on the project, go to this setting button. You would see this option which is called the blank process 19. Give it a new name, whatever you want to specify. You can also provide the description here, something like this. And hit OK at the bottom. There is one other way of renaming the project without using UiPath Studio. Just go to the project folder. In the project folder, you would have something which is called project.json file. Open this file. There are two entries, which is name and the description. 
you can change the new name such as new name from json or anything you can also update the description something like this go to the file save the project.json close this once saved reopen the project in uipath studio and you would notice the new name has been updated along with the description for the ui automation in uipath we have got two experiences one is called the classic and the other is the modern one i have a solution which you can see which is a classic experience as you can see at the top we are seeing all the traditional data scraping and screen scraping and all those things i have got one more solution which is using the modern experiences as we can see we have the app recorder and the table extraction here let's say i am writing an automation in the modern experience and i want an activity which is called element exist as you can see that element exist is a part of classic experience and is not available here how i can get it you have to simply click on this button which says the view options and here you would see an option which says show the classic as soon as you enable it at the bottom you would see that you have enabled the classic experience for yourself in the modern project now if i simply go here and i search for something which is called element exist you would notice that you are able to get inside the classic ui automation and the element exist similarly in the classic experience project if you simply go to this one which says view options and here simply click on show modern you would be able to use all the modern activities here as well so that is how we can use the modern and the classic activities in either of the project to know more about the project we can always go to docs.uipath.com and read about the modern design experiences which was introduced in the uipath version 2020.4 I have an automation in front of me which is completed and ready to get deployed to the orchestrator. If I simply click on the publish button and click on this guy which says publish, by default all the folders and the files available in the project are published to the NuGet package. Now if I open the project you would notice that during the development I have created some extra xaml for the testing such as test2 and the temp and I do not want this xaml to get published to the orchestrator now the requirement is I simply want to ignore them from being published how I can do that that's absolutely simple just click on the xaml right click on it and simply select an option which says ignore from publish right as soon as you do that you would notice the color is now changed to somewhat gray this is getting published this is not getting published i do not want to publish this as well right click on it and simply say ignore from publish that will ignore it from being published along with the new get in case after some time we decide to make it as publishable we can always go to the same xaml which is disabled and right click on it and you have an option which says set as publishable and that will mark this xaml as publishable i have a sequence i'll go to the activities take a message box print a message and run the file the message box is displayed but now do you know that we can even customize this message box as well go back to the studio click on the properties of message box and you would see that we have couple of activities in the buttons you can actually select which all options we want i want yes no cancel not only this i can actually store this option and use in the further part of the automation so for that i will go to the choose in button go here hit control plus k and create a variable called output after this use a right line activity to print the output run the file i have got a message box with three button i simply go and select cancel cancel is recorded in the output apart from this we can also have a caption and a timer this is the time span meaning that it will automatically close in 3 seconds run the file i have got the captions and the message box automatically disappeared after 3 seconds if you always want to bring the message box to the top all you have to do is select this button which says top most okay so that is all for this video i would like to wrap this video here thank you for watching i hope these tips were helpful let me know in the comments which one do you like the most stay tuned to the channel thank you for watching and happy automation mm -hmm.